some of the worst reasons for you to upgrade your irons. And then some of the best. One of the most common questions I get is, Simon, should I upgrade my irons because of X, Y, and Z? So here's some of the worst reasons why you shouldn't upgrade your irons, and then some of the best reasons that potentially you should take that plunge. And today's choice of irons are these tailor-made Sim Max cavity back irons because I feel like they tick a lot of the boxes. And stereotypically, these are the style of irons, age, flex, head type, you name it, that I get the majority of questions about. So first, worst reason to upgrade technology. And let me explain, because I'm not talking about 20 year old irons until now. There has been differences, don't get me wrong, and we'll get into the good and bad of those. What I'm talking about is you have a set of irons that are four years old, five years old, very similar to this, and not only are you upgrading to a newer set of irons, you're getting virtually the same thing. Don't go from one cavity back iron to another cavity back iron in the space of four years. Yes, there is a difference between the Ping G5s, for example, and let's say the brand new Ping G430s, which you would see some difference, but don't just upgrade purely on what they say the new ones are gonna do. Don't go from a Sim Max that I have here, beautiful set of irons and basically 300 pounds second hand to the Stealth Max, which is essentially the same thing, but just with a different paint job. Which neatly brings me on to custom fitting and controversially, it's in one of my worst reasons. And let me explain. I'm not talking about the player that's dropped 10 shots, got down to single figures or mid handicap level and feel like they want ultimate control over the ball. I'm talking about a relatively beginner golfer that's been told they need a quarter inch longer or half an inch longer or maybe one degree upright. And for someone that plays with different irons week in, week out, there is a difference but you've really got to ask yourself, investing 800 to 1,000 pounds in a brand new set of cavity back irons, custom fitted for you, which potentially you're gonna outgrow in six months to a year anyway, is that investment really going to make a difference to your overall scoring ability? Number three, forged irons. And I think people have this love affair and notion of forged irons being the miracle cure. Don't get me wrong, they feel and sound great, but technology's moved on. A lot of the cast head iron sets that we have nowadays feel really good, really soft, really forgiving across the entire face. And typically, if you're going down the forge route, you have to have a smaller head, you have to have less offset, and you're gonna have less forgiveness on those off-center shots. So don't feel like you're missing out because your irons aren't forged. At number four, new looks and what i mean by new looks is placebo this game is very much about confidence and about feeling positive over the clubs that you have in your hand hence why we all have that one favorite club that does better than all the rest and there's no rhyme or reason why that actually is my only advice in this area is if you get to try and test a new set of irons and you hit a bucket of balls and it's the best you've ever done ever go and test them again maybe a third time, just double check, because sometimes you'll pick up your mate's club and it does wonders for you, you buy it off him, and then two weeks later, you have exactly the same problems as you did with your old club. Even though equipment can make a big difference to your golf game, it's not a miracle cure. And my only advice is don't get swept up on love at first sight when you're picking your new set of irons. And then my fifth worst reason to upgrade your irons, before we get into the best reasons, shafts and don't come at me because shafts is also in the best reason category as well but too often i have a lesson or a player or a message where they say i feel like i would benefit from a stiff flex shaft or i would benefit from a regular steel shaft or i feel like i need 10 grams here or 10 grams there and shafts can make a big difference to your golf game but for that mid handicap player that high handicap player 10 gram shaft weight one flex shaft to another flex shaft isn't realistically going to save you six to seven shots out on the golf course. What I say to those people is, what are you looking to fix? Do you need more height? Do you need the ball to stop going to the right-hand side? Do you need the ball to stop going to the left-hand side? And when I get the answers back, 
quite often or not, it's a technical change in their swing that can probably make a bigger difference than changing a regular flex shaft to a stiff one or a 70 gram shaft to a 90. And I've constantly and still will see hundreds of golfers change their irons from a very similar shaft, well, to another. So let's get on to the best reasons. So some of these might be contradictory to the worst reasons, and that's because there's really no right answer. Finding a set of irons that works for you and your golf game can be so specific and so individual, which makes it really tough to answer a lot of people's questions. Is this the right decision? But I've got five pretty good scenarios for you that hopefully you can fit yourself into that category to ask whether I need to upgrade my irons, whether it's second hand or brand new. Number one, handicap coming down. You've been playing the game for a year, two years, you've gone from 22 to 14, and you've got pretty big cavity back irons. And some would say, why fix something that ain't broke? And I also would agree. However, if you're this player that hits their seven iron 170 yards, 180 yards, potentially pull it and it goes 190, that's when you could look at a forge iron set. That's why you could look at something a bit more lofted so that not only you can have a bit more control on the good shots, but you can have a lot more control also on the bad ones. And then on the flip side, number two, your handicap's going up. You've been playing this game 30, 40 years and your MBs, your CBs, your Japanese forged irons used to go 145 with your seven iron and now it's going 120, 115. And that's potentially when I would look at getting that cavity back iron, that graphite shaft. Technology has come along and yes, they've de-lofted the irons, but with the technology and the weight that they put in the head, you're still getting a similar launch. And even though they've got less backspin, they still got enough of a descent angle that you do get to stop it on the green for your club head speed. And even though I know you love the idea of still using your MBs and CBs, I would look at the possibility of making the game a slightly bit easier for yourself which potentially means you can hit a seven iron into the green at one, four, five, opposed to your five. And I told you I'd contradict myself because at number three, we have club fit, but for different reasons. Mid to low handicap players want that ball control, want that flight, want to understand their numbers, and really importantly, want to understand they've got good gapping throughout your bag, from your wedges all the way to your woods at the top end. And there is merit behind that. However, to get the most out of a club fit, you've got to have great centerness of strike. You've got to be able to hit out the middle very consistently with a very consistent swing path, with a very consistent angle attack. So that club fitter can determine the right irons for you and not just a Tuesday in the morning or a Friday in the afternoon. Because if you have an erratic swing behavior because you've just started the game and you've been a bit impatient, well, that club fit in my eyes doesn't really make much sense and you're better off just waiting a tiny bit longer. At number four, we have a pretty unique one, and this is probably for you guys looking to upgrade, but spend the same amount of money, and let me explain. You have a set of tailor-made M2 irons, which you could probably sell for 200 pounds, but the grips are knackered, the grooves are knackered, and you're happy with them. You like your tailor-made M2s. Let's be honest, to get a set of Golf Pride grips put on the end of your clubs, it's gonna cost you 80 to 90 pounds. So it's probably better off just trading them in and maybe spending a tiny bit more money on a set of tailor-made M4s with better grips in similar specs to what you have. And again, for me, that's a great reason to upgrade your irons as you're gonna to have to spend a bit of money on them. Well, regardless. And then lastly, number five, which is ultimately, I would say, the best scenario to upgrade your clubs, well, ever, the steel option. You find a beautiful set of 718 forged irons, AP2s, on Facebook, eBay, Gumtree, your mate, someone down the golf club, 450 pounds. Don't think you're a good enough player. You might think, actually, I need regular flex rather than stiff flex. They say they're one degree upright, quarter an inch longer. But what have you got to lose at that price tag? I'm very fortunate that I get to try tons of equipment. New, old, cheap, expensive. And ultimately, I only know if I like it or if it's going to work for me out here. Not off a range mat, not in an hour-long club fit. 
and because the risk of investment is so low and you're not going to lose any money if you weren't to get on with them or best case scenario you make some money if you don't get on with them then it's kind of a win-win situation to upgrade your golf bag so guys there's my best and worst reasons to upgrade your irons i'd love to hear your thoughts do you agree do you disagree and if you like this video you might like to know how to hit your driver a bit further without upgrading catch you guys there